my name is uh, Kamil Nijuka and uh, I work in, uh, okay, it's a long name, Institute of Archaeology, Cardinal Stefan Wyszyński University in Warsaw. Uh, however, I think that uh, my paper, my researches are not related to the Roman Catholic ideology. It pretends to be, uh, let's say, objective. And uh, I will present you a few remarks uh, related with my PhD thesis that I have an uh, opportunity to defend one year ago. Uh, it's... Uh, ah, this is okay. Is it laser bolts? Okay, laser bolts. And uh, I focus on the settlement uh, studies uh, made from the point of view of uh, spatial analysis and uh, my area of interest is uh, Eastern Pomerania uh, located in the southern uh, coast of the uh, Baltic Sea, here you can see. Uh, I choose this, this area because it's a kind of very interesting uh, both from the, let's <coughs> say, uh, environmental point of view and the archaeological and uh, it's quite, uh, it's, uh, quite uh, diversified. We can find uh, uh, quite a lot of geographical various features, uh, lowlands, uh, quite uh, high hills, uh, a lot of lakes, uh, rivers and so on. And also a very diversified uh, soil structure. And uh, I focus on the turn of the Bronze and the Iron Age. Here you can see the, the chronological shim, which is uh, let's say combine a few uh, systems like the bronze chronology of Montelius, the Hallstatt system and the Latin system. And uh, the thing is that something very interesting happened during the uh, Hallstatt sea phase. Uh, and as a result, uh, there was a, a really huge increase of the a uh, number of archaeological sites that uh, appeared in that period. Uh, here we have Hallstatt C and suddenly in Hallstatt D a huge number of, of, of sites uh, appeared and uh, it is related from the, let's say, traditional point of view of the cultural uh, history archaeology. It's related with a so-called Pomeranian culture. Uh, the most important, let's say, a feature connected with that uh, cultural unit uh, is the appearance of a, a very high number of so-called face urns, which were put in the cis stone graves. Uh, there is a few thousands of, of, of sites uh, uh, located in the whole Poland, and uh, let's say the biggest cluster is, is just in the uh, eastern Pomerania region. Here you can see. And uh, I'll just try to, during my PhD, I just trying to check, uh, can we, let's say, solve the problem of this uh, a really interesting increase of the number of sites uh, from the point of view of the spatial analysis. And I've based on uh, two uh, kind of source data. The first is the, the one that you can see here. These are the uh, sites with a quite strict chronology, but the problem is that they are known from the archival data, from, from, from the publication, and uh, most of them don't have uh, a strict location. So I just put them on the map with uh, accuracy to the, let's say, the name of the town or, or of the village. So it gives the accuracy of two or three uh, kilometers. It's, uh, maybe if we consider whole the region, it's okay, but uh, to make some more specific spatial analysis in some smaller area, it's, it's not enough. And the second source data is uh, are the sites. Uh, I choose some few, uh, let's say, test areas, basing on the, it's called uh, Polish Archaeological Record, in Polish it's uh, AZP. Uh, we have, well, let's say that the whole, sur whole area of Poland was covered by, uh, let's say, by a grid that divided on the rectangles uh, with some, let's say, 70, uh, 37 square kilometers. And uh, as 
facial, uh, a surface survey was conducted in, in that area and uh, all of the sites were put in the maps uh, together with the archival data. Uh, however, as I told you before, the most of the, the, the sites known from the older literature uh, don't have um, exact location, so they were just put in the center of, of, of each village. However, we have uh, quite a lot of sites noticed during the surface survey. Uh, of course, uh, sorry, I'm just forgetting a moment. And uh, it's quite impressive project, but it's also uh, related to, 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 to some problems because if we have a material taken from the surface survey, and uh, it's mainly pottery, and the accuracy, let's say, uh, from the point of view of chronology, it's not the best one. If we consider the, the, the turn of the bronze, of the late bronze and iron age, it's something like 700 years. So the thing is that we have a, a, a good location, but the chronology is still, let's say, uh, very uh, unsatisfying. And also the another problem is that uh, still, uh, even though that the 90% of, of the Polish area was covered by this kind of uh, special survey, a surface survey, uh, in the region of Eastern Pomerania it's more complicate, complicated because 30% uh, of, of the area wasn't still investigated because of various reasons. And so I was a bit limited uh, during uh, choosing the test areas. But I think that I was able to, let's say, to, to choose the, the uh, let's say, the test areas that uh, show the whole diversity of, of, of the whole region of, of, of the Pomerania, of Eastern Pomerania. And of course, it's uh, also the main part of, of, of this archaeological portion, archaeological record is, is still stored in the uh, analog form and it's linked with uh, various problems like now uh, there is a develop, uh, let's say, di digital grid which don't fit to, to the, let's say, analog uh, sheets of, of all of the maps and it's problem of the georeference. Uh, but still, yeah, let's say that uh, it, it's changing and now the things are just putting into the GIS uh, system but it's still it's a, a huge amount of data so we need to wait with that. And, um, Okay, so uh, I have these uh, eight test areas. Uh, I marked the 1,533 sites that have the chronology set to the, let's say, the turn of the Bronze and Iron Age. And when I was preparing my PhD thesis, I thought that it would be very convenient just to put the sites on some uh, various kind of maps uh, related with uh, environment, with a local environment. I have access to the geomorphological map and the map related with uh, potential natural vegetation and the soil types, the soil types uh, which also can show us the complexes of soil uh, sustainability. The thing is that especially the, the, the last two, uh, they are made for totally contemporary state and well, so uh, of course we should be, I was very, I tried to be careful, you know, and I just, I don't want to say that this is the, the straight, let's say, a relation with, with the, let's say, the, the, the late Bronze Age and early Iron Age. I think that the geomorphology is the most reliable from that point of view because we are talking about the period after the last glaciation, so, so uh, the things didn't change. And, uh, well, what happens when I just uh, checked the, what's the location of the sites and uh, the light uh, gray lines means the, the surface of each geomorphological structure and the dark gray is the number of sites and the thing is that the, the site just appears in the areas with the highest, uh, <coughs> let's say, surface. Uh, what was caused, well, in my opinion, by a totally contemporary factor, uh, namely the accessibility of area for the surface survey. And it's similar with all the other type of, uh, let's say, uh, digital data related with uh, environmental things like potential natural vegetation. We can also notice the, the majority of the sites in the area uh, which were just accessible. 
Uh, here is interesting because, okay, these are the brown soils, uh, very popular uh, from the point of view of the um, contemporary agriculture, uh, but we have here, this is a forest. Forest and uh, wastelands, which are usually, usually it's difficult to, to make a surface survey on the wastelands because it's covered by some dense grasses and it's possible to detect archaeological sites and the same situation is in the woodland. Of course, we have now the leader uh, things and it's more easy, but still you are able to detect only the uh, features which are visible uh, on the leader and on the field as well, so like barrows and hill forts. And these are the yeah these are the complex of agricultural sustainability and the same this is this is also the the, the woodlands and the wastelands and uh, all of the sites just uh, they just focus in the areas with a, let's say medium uh, agricultural usability but still it's uh, very easy to to get the access because we just walk through the fields used by the uh, the farmers and without any problems so. Uh, well, the, the, the main remark that I've made during this, let's say, research is that just, uh, well, it's not related to any factors like uh, that the past societies from that period uh, didn't prefer, let's say, uh, any specific kind of, of, of soil or, let's say, the complex of potential vegetation, but it just caused let's say the location uh, by by the access, the possible access to, to some zones. So I got a bit further in that direction and I choose, let's say, four uh, contemporary factors that could uh, influence the, the contemporary state of archaeological recognition based on, on the, the, the data taken from the Polish archaeological record. And this is uh, the shape of uh, wood cover, the current settlement structure, the course of the large investments related with some bigger rescue excavations, and the uh, imbalance activity of uh, local archaeologists from the past and currently it uh, as well. Work. So of course about the woodlands, the most of the size uh, detected during the surface survey was uh, um, not in the woodlands, about only 7% was detected in the woodlands. And the thing is that uh, it's, in my opinion, it's even lower percentage because there is many sites. I mean, this the Polish archaeological record was initiated 50 years ago, so even some sites uh, recorded in, let's say, open area now it's covered by the woods because, it's, let's say, wood cover is changing. But let's say uh, the more important thing is the contemporary settlement. Uh, I just made, I prepared a, a model of. of a kind of model pretends to be, uh, let's say, the, the image of a contemporary settlement. Here we have uh, the, the, the red spots are the contemporary towns, villages, and uh, the, let's say, the red polygons are the urban areas. I just uh, use the kernel density estimation uh, with uh, weights uh, that were related to the number of inhabitants. Of, of the villages and I just also set uh, the highest rank for the uh, urban area and uh, this was the result and I just uh, used the spatial autocorrelation uh, in order to, to let's say to to see if there is any relation between the location of the site spotted during the surface survey uh, of the Polish archaeological record I used to analyze this first. Uh, okay, I, I based. I, I was working with the Arc GIS, so uh, you can find the uh, already, uh, let's say, uh, tools for that. So I used the Morans once, special autocorrelation, and get this old general G, high low clustering. And uh, the first just showed that there is a spatial autocorrelation in each case, but let's say the second one is more specific. It can sh show us that if there are any, let's say, clusters, uh, uh, concentration of, of archaeological sites in the area with a high, let's say, level of, of contemporary settlement. And then as a result of this, uh, the second analysis, 
in most of the cases, the, the red means that there is a, a very strong autocorrelations and uh, the sites appears in the areas where there is a, let's say, a strong, uh, I mean, a visible a contemporary human activity uh, of the settlement activity. And in this case, it was, let's say, a bit also, it's the autocorrelation is also visible, but it's not so strong. The two green spots uh, box are, let's say, uh, it's just the autocorrelation couldn't be, let's say, track. And there is one example related with, with this test area that uh, there is a negative autocorrelation in the meaning that the sites appear more often in the areas with a lower, uh, let's say, contemporary activity. However, it's also related with the fact that this area was area of interest of interest uh, uh, of the Institute of, of Archaeology from the Wuch University. They made a lot of, of investigation there. And uh, on the other hand, uh, there is not so many uh, towns and villages, uh, only the small ones. So uh, this is also, let's say, an, uh, a kind of interesting thing. And, uh, and the second, the, the, the third thing that I track is the course of the large investments. And we have this A1 highway uh, built about 10 years ago. And as you can see, it's these are the settlement sites because there is uh, only, I mean, most of the sites are the cemeteries uh, and there is only about uh, um, a bit more than 100 of uh, settlements uh, excavated and known in the literature. So it's a kind of a limited number. And as you can see, uh, about 40% of them was discovered because of the, let's say, contemporary bigger investments. Like here also, it's, uh, it was a, um, a huge investment in the 80s uh, linked with, uh, with a build of a, a nuclear power plant, uh, which wasn't actually made finished. Uh, but still, so we can see how it's, it can be within, I mean, there is no, uh, let's say, settlement concentration here. It just caused because of the course of, of, of the investments. And the last thing is uh, just the activity of, of uh, of various archaeologists who focused on, on the each area. And this is just one example of, it's rather not, uh, let's say, a full, uh, full uh, let's say, professional archaeologist. He was rather uh, antiquarian, Gottfried Ossowski, but he was extremely active during the second uh, half of the 19th century. Uh, he excavated around 100 of sites. However, of course, he was excavating in the means of the 19th century, so he wasn't so using the strict rules. So the thing that uh, I wanted to, let's say, to end the conclusions is just that uh, there is a, a big question. Can we use this data taken from this uh, archaeological record, Polish, but I think also related to, to archaeological records in, in other countries, which are based mainly on the surface survey. Can we use this data because this projects are, let's say, they have the conservatory meaning. They are not strict, let's say, scientific one. But it's a good question. Can we use them uh, as, a, let's say, a strict uh, scientific data? And, uh, well, I think that the answer is yes, but we cannot just use them as straightforward just to put them on the maps and uh, make some analysis that could show us, for example, is there a preference of some kind of soil types? But we can just check, uh, are there, let's say, influenced by some other factors uh, linked with uh, rather contemporary uh, things, and later just uh, treat them as a kind of, uh, let's say, extra addition to some uh, regular uh, spatial analysis related with uh, settlement studies, which should be, at least in my opinion, based on some um, good, uh, let's say, well-known area with a lot of sites excavated uh, with that have a good chronology and so thank you very much